Hey everybody, coming to you from the Creativity Zone. Mrs. Wilson here, getting ready to teach a quick demonstration on a fun lesson that all has to do with two-dimensional types of work you can make in clay. So as I continue teaching my middle schoolers about ceramics, I would like to introduce you to a really cool design technique that has to do with the basic art form of drawing in clay. So our artworks don't have to be three-dimensional every time. Here is a piece I made back in college and I learned about the technique of inlay, which has to do with drawing in clay. I wrote it a slab, so you may recall learning with me how we create slab constructions by rolling out the clay with a rolling pin. And if you're not sure, to recall how I stored those, or you're curious where I got that. I've actually had clay slabs in this bag in my studio outside with my clay area for over a week. And what I did, if you can recall learning this with me, I rolled out my slabs and then I stored them in newspaper or magazines to keep them moist and to also suck out some of the water from the soft slab. And now they are more of a texture, which you would call a stiff slab. But I'm not going to let them get leather hard before I start this project, because if I would, it would be too difficult to carve into them. So they are all in a form that you could call stiff. And uh, I would say that that's sort of midway between feeling like a soft slab that you just rolled out with fresh clay and leather hard, which is where it's really getting hard and you can build three dimensional forms with it, but it's really hard to draw or carve into it. So to take a step back, what is inlay? Inlay is when you draw in clay. Technically, there is a really cool technique that is known as Mishima. Mishima is where you put inlay in clay and then slip or wet clay with color has been added over top and then rubbed off. And then glazes are also applied, which is what I did when I made this piece in college. The coloration on the eyes are from underglaze, was a green underglaze. All of the lines were drawn into the clay while it was softer, uh, a thick slab, otherwise known as a stiff slab. And then I wiped off the excess of the slip or the underglaze with a sponge and then this extra stuff around the sides was for my second firing where I added glaze I had this beautiful turquoise glaze that I really like but as you might notice I didn't want the turquoise clays to get onto the face or any of the actual clay and it was kind of strange how I created this because I was only 19 years old but when I looked at it after it came out of the kiln even now it's like wow I guess I am an old soul because I did not quite look that old when I was 19. But as you know, Mrs. Wilson loves to create self-portraits. And it's just really kind of a fascinating to wonder maybe I was supposed to look that old. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create the rest of my form. And I'm making with this stiff slab, always saving my extra clay because you can always use it for other things. I am making a rectangle cutting that off with my tool. And what I want to do is think to myself, like I was going to draw on paper, what do I want to draw? So for your first inlay Nishima project, you're going to get a piece of clay that you've rolled out that's a slab, somewhere between being a soft slab and a stiff slab. And then you're going to take your time and you're going to think about how just using your imagination here, what would you want to draw on that? Now, if you need some inspiration, let's think about how I've been teaching you about mythology. That is something that I really enjoy. And by the way, in case you're wondering, what is she doing right now? I'm using the end of this tool to turn and carve away some holes. Because the one thing I learned the hard way when I created that inlay piece back in my college years was I didn't have anything prepared so that I could hang the piece. I'm actually also thinking it could be really fun to create a neat design to make it look like it's got a frame. So I love wavy lines. So. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to draw into the clay, but I'm using a material that is one of these nice clay 
tools that we have in the art room that you have to be careful with that are very sharp, but they're just like drawing with, um, you know, like, like almost like with a toothpick or, or with a uh, pin. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn my piece this way. Oh, the last thing I'll remember to do is also inlay my name on the back of the piece, which you'll need to do also because of our, we don't want anybody having our pieces mixed up. Okay. So I think I'm going to probably think about one of my favorite myths and figure out how I want to place that in the piece. Hmm. I'm thinking about creating a portrait of a mermaid. Because as you know, I love to draw mermaids. Okay, so I wanted to turn this so that I could have the piece facing the camera, but it is really hard to do. But I'm also gonna do something on purpose to show you what you could do if you mess up. Let's just say you don't like what you drew. Like, I'm not real happy with how that face turned out. All you'd have to do is quickly just wipe it away because the piece of clay is, <clears throat> A stiff slab and that wouldn't be difficult to do. Now before you get started you might want to refer to your sketchbook and think about what you'd like to sketch on your piece. This could be if you're interested in doing what I love to draw, one of the mythical creatures that you've researched, making up your own mythical creature, and you can play around with textures as well. I have some textures that I think I'm going to put in my picture today or my piece. But remember, those experiments that we did with texture is something that you might want to continue playing around with when you are in the classroom and we are getting at our slabs. You can combine a little bit of that texture if you'd like and just sort of get into the zone. Still love to draw mermaids or sirens, but a lot of students don't know the full myth of the siren or the mermaid that depicts or shows, or actually the story is that the sirens actually had wings. I had this little butterfly clip that I wanted to include just for fun. But the texture didn't come out as good as I wanted it to go. So do that. So I was thinking it could be really fun though to continue to use this in some way, this little pattern or this little texture of a chain that I have. But first I'm just gonna go ahead and just get going here and just do my thing. I think I still love the mermaid <laughs> as one of my uh, favorite myths because I love summer and it's September while I'm making this video and it's the end of September and it's kind of my least favorite time of year because I sadly know it's time for me to put away all my summer clothes. It was... It's getting too cold for summer swimming. Swimming is my favorite thing to do. Okay, now doing her face is gonna be tricky, but just so you see what I got going on here, it's, it is complicated to create a video where I have the entire piece facing upside down. I have a really hard time doing that with these videos that I create for my students. But in just a few minutes, I'll turn it around. The main thing to recall, though, is drawing in clay is a really fun technique that 
you can create using your imagination and your ability to draw. And your pieces do not have to be three-dimensional. Most of my students who come to me in middle school have had a little bit of experience with pottery. Yes, pottery is one of the most popular art forms that I find students really want to have fun and work with. And most students I've taught, they know how to make pinch pots. They might know a little bit about coiling. They usually don't know a lot about slabs, which is one of the reasons I'm definitely looking forward to teaching these skills. And this technique, Mishima, where you draw in clay is something that I don't see too many kids knowing anything about. But as you know, I love to draw and I know as we continue this school year, you'll show me more interesting things of your, of your interest, things that you love to draw. That it's really fun to create mixed media pieces where you're combining more than one media. And so you could think about that as well as I finish this piece up where if I was concerned about making a practice sketch before I try to etch the face or scratch the face into this clay, I could. As you know, though, I think for me personally, and I try to show my students this, I think it builds confidence to just go with the flow. It's art. If you think you don't like it, you can always start over. Now, the tricky part is if you want to do little bitty details, I'm making the face of the mermaid right now. If you want to do little bitty detail with a sharp tool to create inlay onto your slab while it's still soft or wet, it's tricky because the smaller the detail, every time you carve into the clay, you're going to get little bits of clay that pop up. So I just kind of carefully do this and pull the extra clay off of my sharp tool. And for this part, it may be better if you have a sharper, really sharp tool. I have some other things laying around here, like one of these wooden styluses, um, even the carving knife. But the sharper, pointer tool you have, the better. Now, if you were a remote student and you were doing this at home with the clay I give you, a thumbtack may be also just as good. Let me play with that just for a few minutes to demonstrate. Because I know we may have some remote learners watching this. And to be fair to you, I want to make sure that you understand that all of the projects I am teaching to your class are here for everybody. And who knows, maybe you're somebody watching that isn't a student of mine, or maybe you're not a middle school student of mine, maybe you're one of the elementary students. You could do this at the elementary school. Okay, now I've actually realized that using this thumbtack has been really, really effective. Um, I've created this little mermaid lady. And it's really fun too, to create different kinds of texture on the surface by thinking about line and how we're drawing here. So you can create a more interesting piece with lots of variety. If you have variety because you are pushing a little harder with one of your drawing tools versus pushing lightly, you're going to create an interesting piece that has more interesting surface textures. And again, you can create a drawing into your piece using the technique of inlay and Mishima, but also combine some textural effects as well. You may even want to think about selecting a textural object that is personal, that you bring in from home or that you have that means something to you. But I will be honest, I have discovered playing with texture that some of the textures that are the most interesting textures do not come from an object that's the most interesting. For example, this is just a little chain that I have here. So using it to press in and make some kind of a, 
I'm going to make it like a circular form here with one of my spirals. As you know, if you looked at my art, one of the objects I put in my art a lot is, is swirls. I just, I just find them aesthetically pleasing, I guess. And see, dig that out so it doesn't get stuck. It's hard to dig things out sometimes. I'm just going to use that same little thumbtack I've been using to do that. But um, I did bring my wedding ring because my wedding ring has a lot of texture on it. It's got these cool swirls. And because that's something that means something to me, I'm going to use that in the piece. This is something I had fun and figured out when I used it as a texture. By the way, if you're a student of mine and you see this video before I air it for my middle schoolers in school year 2022-23, this video is being created because I am taking a class all about ceramics and doing this as part of my educational sabbatical this year as I am taking a year off from teaching, but just really delving into making my own art and this this first course I'm taking is all about clay. I'm working in my pottery studio, which I'm super excited about. Yeah, so I just did that as a fun little, little textural piece. And I think the only thing I'm going to do now is to wrap up this piece. I have to remember, too, that if, you go, if I go to lift that, it might warp. And I want to keep it flat because I'm envisioning taking this piece and when it's all finished being able to hang on the wall what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about like a drawing that when I'm done with my drawings I always like to sign them and remember as I teach you you might want to figure out your own way of creating a style with your art that you have a I forgot, I forgot to put the ocean she's in the ocean here do my waves. You might want to think about how you can create your own signature or your own little way of signing your art. Excuse me as my hair gets into my art. Okay. And the only thing I was going to say was I'm using a piece of canvas paper here that we have or that canvas set so that as I work with it, I'm trying to not um, move it too much, lifting it up because I don't want to warp it. And all I was going to say was, I'm going to go ahead and pick a corner to sign my art. As you know, I like to use J.E. Crumb. Making these really angular letters that become a little bit more abstracted on purpose. Sometimes I date my pieces, but I'm not really worried about it. Okay, now what I'm thinking about as I finish creating these waves, an ocean scene for my mythical mermaid piece, it's closer so you can see it better, is I have to let this piece dry out in the sun and in a warm place in my home in the evenings, because it's getting cooler now, even though my pottery studio is outside. But what I want to do is let this piece dry for at least a week. So today is a Monday. So by next Monday, I should be able to fire it. The next plan for my piece of my Mishima inspired inlay work drawing of a mythical mermaid on this slab is to add underglaze over the whole area and then wipe off the excess with a sponge. There'll be a second video that goes to this piece. So this is part one of the Mishima technique. And then I'll also demonstrate how I can use some glazes, which I'm very excited that I've got orange and teal coming at this moment being ordered. And I have black underglaze as well as white underglaze. So I'm gonna be demonstrating those other techniques to part two of this video, which relates to the art of Mishima drawing or putting inlay in clay and creating. Okay, people, thank you for watching from Mrs. Wilson's Creativity Zone. Stay creative, kids. See ya in the class.